My name is Bruce Yang, and today I thought I would share with you an activity that we look at in my class when we're studying harmonics. There's the classic pendulum of a bob hanging on a string, and it's swinging back and forth in regular in intervals, but there's other things that we can investigate. So I'd like to share with you some of the activities that I offer the kids to investigate. So let's take a closer look. The first pendulum we look at is a simple pendulum, and it's the classic example of changing the length. So we start off with short pendulums, and we would time them, then make them a little bit longer, time them again, and we're seeing what effect the length has on its period. So we continue to make them longer and longer, and time them. In this case, we have it hanging from the ceiling, and we see that it's progressively getting slower. Our longest pendulum hangs from upstairs to downstairs. It's about five meters long. A second problem that students might tackle would be a change of mass of the bob. So we'd start off with a single bob and swing it back and forth and time it, and then we'd add a second bob to it to double its mass, see if that has any effect. We'd add a third one, time it, a fourth one, and we're looking to see if the increase in mass has any effect on the time it takes for it to swing back and forth one movement. Problem number three is taking a look at the distance that we pull the pendulum back and release it from. Uh, does it make any difference whether we pull it back just a short distance or a longer one? So we'd use a protractor to measure off the angle that we would release it from, pull it back, time it to see if that has any effect on its period. Problem number four is actually taking a look at bar pendulums. We start off with a short pendulum, then we'd add a longer bar, time it, switch to a longer bar, time that. We would continue making our measurements with even longer bars. And finally, we get to the longest one that I have, which is about two meters. And we're seeing in this case, once again, if length has any effect on the period of time that it takes for it to swing back and forth. I also like to have students investigate spring pendulums. In this case, I have a spring that's moving a weight back and forth, and we're going to add additional weights to see if that has any effect on the movement. So they would add additional washers to it to make it heavier and then see what effect the additional mass has on its movement. And we get even heavier. So there's a spring bar pendulum. I also want students to take a look at coupled pendulums. So here I have a string that's attached to two points on this bar support, and then there's two pendulums that are hanging down from that, and they simply pull one of the pendulums back and then watch the results. How about if we change the mass of a bar pendulum? Uh, in this case, I have a ruler that's hanging down from a support, and we would time it to find its period, and then we're simply going to add a second meter stick that's the same size. We would tape them together. So now I've doubled the mass. Is that going to have any effect on its period? So we would time them. We can add a third meter stick to it to make it three times as massive, a fourth meter stick to make it four times as massive, and so forth to see if increasing the mass has any effect on its period. So we're changing the mass of a bar pension. Here's another system for students to investigate. This is called a coupled pendulum. We have a certain length of string from here to here. We have a 200 gram mass, a second string from here to here. This string is the same length as this. This mass down here is 20 grams, so it is one-tenth of this one here. And if we pull this one back and release it, we look to see if we can notice any patterns of the one pendulum affecting the other one.
After students watch this a while, they should be able to notice the pattern from one to the other. We could also investigate the movement of a coiled spring pendulum. In this case, we have a certain amount of mass hanging on a coiled spring, and it's bobbing up and down, and if we increase the mass, will that have any effect on the time it takes for one period? If you don't have coiled springs available, you could also do the same experiment with rubber bands that have been tied together. That works very nicely also. <laughs> okay. One more investigation we can try is the orientation of the movement. For example, this is swinging east and west. What would happen if we were to swing it north and south? Or we could even try it in a circle, going clockwise or counterclockwise. Do any of these variables have any effect on the period, or the amount of time it takes for one complete movement? So these are some of the investigations that we can try in my classroom. I hope you found these useful, and hopefully you'll come back and see me again. Okay, thank you. Bye.